We need to consider all triangles formed by lines passing through the point 8 ninths comma 3 and both the x and y axes. The question is asking us to find the dimensions of the triangle with the shortest hypotenuse. So this question is a little more complicated to understand, so we're going to jump ahead to the diagram first and then go back to our question. So it's showing us that we have the y-axis and the x-axis and the point 8 ninths comma 3. And if we connect the three things, we can form a right angle triangle. And we're not sure which angle of the pencil is going to make the shortest hypotenuse, but one of them will. So it could be going through 8 ninths comma 3 like this, 8 ninths comma 3 hitting the x-axis way over there. We're not really sure. But the question is asking us, back to step one, to opti optimize the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. So just as a quick refresher, this is the equation of our right angle triangle. And we're going to say that h is going to be the hypotenuse length. So that means that the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And it is important to note that the hypotenuse has to be greater than zero. So that's why when we solve for c squared in our original equation, we don't have to worry about the negative case because it's going to give us a positive answer. We also know that x has to be greater than 8 ninths because obviously if we connect 8 ninths vertically, hitting x at 8 ninths, we're never going to hit the y-axis, so it's not going to give us a triangle. So the x value has to be something bigger than 8 ninths as a restriction that's important to note. So in order to solve this problem, we're going to use similar triangles. So in our diagram here, we have a large triangle that has height y, and the base would be x, and then we have a smaller triangle. And in our smaller triangle, the height of the smaller triangle is 3, and the base of the smaller triangle is x subtract 8 ninths. So make an equation with similar triangles. We have y over x, which is the large triangle, is equal to 3 over x minus 8 ninths. And if we solve this for y, we have our constraint equation that we can then substitute into y squared from our hypotenuse equation to get a relationship between x and the hypotenuse. Now we have one variable on each side of a equation, so we can definitely take the derivative of this equation. Unfortunately, the derivative is a little bit long because we need to take the derivative of the square root and then the inside part, and the inside part has kind of a more complicated solution part inside of that even. So the derivative of the outside is here, and then we're going to take the derivative of the x squared and then the derivative of 3x over x minus 8 ninths squared. The 2 comes down in front. We repeat the inside. Then I use the quotient rule on the inside. You're more than welcome to change that to product rule if you wish. Now, this line is then going to be set equal to 0. And the first part of this is the denominator of our giant equation. And the second part, all of this would be the numerator. And as we've discussed in other videos, if you have a numerator over a denominator set equal to zero, only the numerator is going to give us solutions. So that's what I have written here. Unfortunately, this numerator also has a numerator and a denominator. So I made a common denominator, x minus 8 ninths cubed, by multiplying the first term, which was 2x up here, by x minus 8 ninths cubed, because there's 1 there and 2 there, giving us another giant fraction to take a look at. And since this is equal to 0, again, the numerator is what's going to give us a solution. So I simplified the numerator. And then look, taking a look at this, this is where, if you remember to always check for factors, that's going to help you out quite a bit, because we can common factor out 2x. And that leaves us with x minus 8 ninths cubed, subtract 8 as our other factor. So if we set 2x equal to 0, we get x equals 0, which is not possible because we know that it has to be larger than 8 ninths. And if we solve the other equation, we get um, x minus 8 ninths cubed is equal to 8. If we cubed root the 8, we get 2. Solve for x, we get 26 ninths. So then we're going to use our equation. So we know that x has to be greater than 8 ninths, but we're not sure how much smaller than infinity it has to be. So we're going to let that go all the way to infinity. And we're going to check 26 over 9. So I substituted the number 1 into my derivative equation. So you can use any one of these three that you want to use. And I got a negative value. 
and then I substituted the number three into the same place and got a positive value indicating that the hypotenuse is indeed a minimum. So that tells us that 26 ninths and y equals 13 over three gives us the shortest hypotenuse and that shortest hypotenuse would be 13 times the square root of 13 over nine units.